Okay, we are ready. We are live. Um, I will get uh, one um, guest here, uh, Gustav uh, Skolun. I hope you will uh, give me the the pronunciation of the of the name uh, on live. Um, <clears throat> so today I wanted to talk about the. The recent post I've put on the R station and uh, on my website as well about the, <clears throat> the different techniques around um, around the micro bevel system uh, and the weighted uh, vertex normal. Uh, I will probably slow down. I mean, get the music a bit uh, quiet. Okay, that's probably better. Um, do you... Uh, I have to check if the recording is uh, recording as well the audio, but it looks like it's okay. Do Gustav can uh, join again? Waiting you for starting back. Let me know when you are there. Um, okay, so let me uh, continue on the presentation. So yes, um, that post was about managing the different uh, vertex normal uh, um, settings in model and be sure that you can export <coughs> a correct result into uh, another package or in another uh, game engine for instance and so here you see on the screen uh, with and without the uh, editing um, so the the main principle is that when you are looking at um, the vertex normals they should be edited um, manually or you can have different uh, system and different uh, settings uh, on your table in model to let you de define how you want to to manage those um, from the material perspective and so i will uh, talk about this and you can see with and without the result is completely different and even you can bake um, <clears throat> some of the vertex normal of a uh, nairez mesh uh, back onto the low poly and it can help you uh, remove some artifacts and things that can be uh, messy sometimes um, so yeah also you can get some kind of floaters so probably here um, if i open this one i will jump uh, onto the next um, onto the home of my um, portfolio uh, so where I can check and test this. Okay, here you can see on this one, we will see the wireframe as well on this. And as you can see, uh, even if here we didn't, we, we might expect that this is, I mean, this little uh, nibs is connected to the surrounding. It's not, and same with this one. It's completely flat and two different PCs and three different PCs even with this one. So. It lets you uh, define the vertex normals uh, at the surrounding of the geometry, the edge boundary, and so it mix up correctly and it's still a floater uh, on the mesh. So it's pretty convenient uh, for the real-time um, rendering. Um, so there is no uh, there is no uh, baking in 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 the terms. You can transfer some data, but yeah, it, there's there's some things that are much more simple simple than doing the the, the normal map uh, baking and uh, of course you need the UVs as well to do the baking so it can speed up the 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 results and still the amount of polygons is not that much uh, present. So for instance here uh, those little pin uh, on on the on this uh, bottom side of the HDMI is also floaters you get the same thing over here uh, on the connection connectors over there um, and so when you are looking at the wireframe you see there's no connections right and even those 
small uh, pad over here they are not uh, into the mesh and they are not connected to the mesh they are just floaters so let's see uh, we will uh, switch to uh, model um can you join um gustav i don't know if you are you have joined already uh let me check i'm switching to the discord you are in the general and i will ah okay i was i was in need to uh move you on the live stream uh sections so hello uh, gustav hello yeah i didn't see the live stream section okay no problem um so here um i, I don't know if you if you uh, follow the the explanation but if you have any questions uh, we will uh, walk through the different possibilities over over the presentations um, so don't hesitate and, and ask me uh, anything you, you need uh, on this so <clears throat> I've al already uh, talked about this um, later on uh, on another stream for the pixel fondue um, about the micro bevel um, workflow and that lets you uh, define some pretty nice uh, surface um, and i usually uh, really like to use the the matcap shaders uh, for uh, showing those so i will probably uh, switch to this let me see uh, we didn't need the left viewport and as well this one is not necessary i will even do this in full screen and yeah right now i can only hear your voice i can't uh, see any live stream ah you didn't see the live stream um okay we have something weird here so i can only press join voice or wait yeah okay Yeah, okay, now I can see you. Yeah, great. There's the, I, wait, I still have a problem. Right now, uh, there is a scrolling view of some of your... Uh, okay, switched. Work. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was checking on the side uh, if you wasn't uh, um, looking at the at the live stream or seeing it uh, because I was uh, on, not on the on the right uh, scene. Okay, so now it's, it's okay. Uh, probably you can see the... The back clips uh, over here. Is that okay? Still the, yeah, now, now it's okay. Okay, the there, there's uh, a bit, yeah, there's a bit delayed. delay, right? So, what I will do um, here is that I will just remove the vertex normal. So, just to show the result, the final result, the ending result uh, at the end, um, is that uh, probably I will switch to another kind of uh, reflections okay so the red probably is too too bright maybe this one is better uh, okay so here you can see that all the flat uh, surface is pretty flat i mean there's no artifact like triangulations or triangles that are showing onto the screen and so uh, all the kind of gradients are uh, correctly uh, represented and so yeah it it shows that the vertex editing is good now. Um, what I will do is um, just delete the vertex normal. So get back to a normal shading. And as I did this, you see that already we can see the the, the artifact on the on the mesh. So I will probably remove the eye lightning uh, with the wireframe uh, on the on the. Um, on the viewport, uh, there's probably where is that? It's probably on the active one. 
Because when I mouse over... You, you have a bit of uh, audio feedback, so I can hear some of your audio, it repeats lower in the background. Yeah, probably because you have, you have also the, the audio on the YouTube, so probably yeah, right. turn off the audio on the YouTube and stay on the Discord. Okay. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I should, I should do this, uh, at the start before launching the, the stream anyway. Um, so here, um, what I have probably is one thing that might be, uh, um, creating some mistake. So I, when I mouse over, you see that the, you see the wireframe. So when we are looking at this, it's probably better to don't, uh, see the wireframe over uh okay so that's this now uh, probably not i will hide the selection ah that's the feeling or the outline selection rollover okay that's the rollover apparently so yes now now we have just removed the vertex normal and you can see mm, some kind of artifact like this one and many others uh, on the shape it it didn't look like it's completely soft and, 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 and flat on those areas. So that's why the vertex editing is important to 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 be managed um, as well as here. So for instance, yeah, you can see the artifact pretty tough uh, over here as well as some reflections. It's even more uh, visible when you are using the matcap uh, this way, but with a specular and something that can be metallic or something like this, you can see it really clearly so um the way it works in 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 moto <clears throat> and here i have the material that is set for this uh, area um as i see uh, when i am turning this off it's changing the shading but even with the base material is it's not correctly shade uh, so the base material have those settings um the the where is the uh, I'm looking at the ah that's probably because I'm using also the the shading nerd uh, kit um I've just in installed it uh, recently and I'm uh, looking at the different uh, settings for the the normal uh, I will probably remove this so I will probably save the scene um, remove just disable it the time I'm doing the stream because it will mess up my uh, my reference point um, okay so let's see I will start again okay it's running so yeah the the, the way uh, model is uh, defining the vertex normal and even if you didn't create the map but you will export the data as an FBX, for instance, the, uh, the, the data can be uh, stored in the FBX. And so that there is a matching this way between what you see in Moto and what you export uh, as an FBX. So <clears throat> the, the way the, 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 the shading is done is from the material at first. Then you can also use um, the hard edge and soft edge uh, system so i will go back and select back uh, the object that was it's on the top i would just select it here okay so now we are on the shading okay and in the base material so that that's the default uh, settings and you can see it clearly on the surface normal sections in the material uh, reference you can see that there is a smoothing angle. Mine is set to the maximum. Um, so it, usually you have uh, 40 degrees, I think. So this is what you can see normally uh, by default in model. But in my uh, Smallster kit, I'm, I'm, I'm defining this um, to a specific uh, amount of uh, degree for the smoothing angle. So that, uh, that's the maximum uh, I'm setting it. Uh, so uh, 179 degrees so not 
the the complete one but any, anyway i have these settings and so everything now is soft of course if you define this to 10 everything that is uh, less than 10 will be soft but everything that is more than 10 degrees will be hard um you have this and so when i go and open the vertex normal tools even if i select the object and make it completely soft you see that there is no effect um, in the statistic you will see or in the vertex maps you will see there is no uh, other maps like harden and soften uh, things so if i select one edge i have to check back the show selections okay so now that i have some edges i can select those and make them hard and of course the others are completely hardened by the, the material but not by the this map okay the hard edge peak so this is completely different uh, if i soften everything there is no more hardened edge because everything is soft so from the base materials when you are looking at the reference here the surface normal if i'm um, increasing this so 50 degrees 90 degrees then things get more softer right um, compared to the degree between the different phase um, and then if i do this uh, to the maximum amount uh, 179 degrees i can go over but it didn't make sense uh, that's a, a completely revolve um, uh, settings so here I'm also defining that I wait the um, I do the weighting of the of the the shading with the area uh, system. So when you are using model since about ten years or or more even, you have this this mode that was just a known uh, area weighting. Then it was implemented into probably the ten release or, or the nine release. And there were this area weighting that was defined. So the angle is defined here. You have the angle weighting that is influencing the shading. And so when you are checking area, then it looks, it looks, I mean, Moro is looking at the different areas of those faces and looks, okay, this one have more priority than this one because the area is bigger. And so there's more importance uh, on two doors than this one that it's is at the middle so from this point uh from these settings uh you have you are basically ready to 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 use the the the, the tools for for refining the shading but if i check a look take a look at the result of the vertex maps i will just set it for this one so set vertex normal and we will show the vertex normal with this. So under view, you can show the vertex normals. And you will see that um, some of the areas here that are completely flat, you see that some of those uh, vectors are not completely straight and, and perpendicular to this surface. So it means that the area is pretty good, pretty accurate but you can go even further uh, with some editings. And as well, uh, there's another uh, solution that is a bit better. So probably I will do this and just duplicate the mesh. So go back, Control Z. Okay, so we, now we will get two meshes. I will just do this and duplicate this one. Okay, so now we have those two objects. One will be this one, and I will just remove the vertex normal. And I will set another material. So just this one will be, will use the largest uh, um, mode of the shading. So now I've defined this one. And in the properties, instead of area, I will do largest. And you already see the difference. You see that here on the left side, we have this one that is set with the material, soft material that is set 
to area mode. Okay, so the area weighting is this one. Probably remove the vertex normal. And so we have this result. And with the latest uh, release of model, probably the, not the 16, but probably the 15, I, I have to check, but you have this mode that is now the largest one that is much better in terms of computing. So the, the way it, it, it Dif differenti differentiate and compare the, the, the areas and their positions is much better in terms of uh, algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. Um, there is still some mistake over here for instance that are not correctly set but we, we will just fix those so the best things you, you can do probably when you are doing this kind of work is that your material is using the largest one so the smoothing angle at the maximum and the area weighting uh, set to largest. And of course, when you are doing the area weighting largest, you see that the angle weighting is completely disabled. It's not even selectable. With the area one, it's selectable. Okay, so you can change it. But the largest one, you just have the largest uh, algorithm that is used. So from here, if I do this again and create the vertex normal, actually we have nothing. So you can export this uh, to uh, Unity, for instance, and you will keep the, the, the same look and the same shade, right? But if you do this and set the vertex normal, then you will be sure that you, you, will, you will export this with the correct shading like this one, but also be able to edit the, 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 the shading. So um i will close probably this uh, tab because it's not what we are using actually in terms of workflow so the main uh, tool i'm using actually is venom um so the kit that i've uh, released with smonster is all about uh, setting the, the vertex normal um, onto this kind of mesh so when i have the the mouse over a face it will take for instance the face vector and set uh, the vector on all the faces that are co coplanar to this one so it's it's like you are selecting this face and you will just choose the select coplanar by two degree for instance and you will select those and set those with the same vector because they are pointing to the same directions um so it's pretty simple right here we will probably check also the vertex normal to see the difference between what we've seen before and what we see now so now for instance you see that the vector over here that we've seen before was this way okay tilting on the side but now it's completely straight or fairly straight and so you see the result is much better um I will probably disable the visibility of the vertex normal because it takes some time to process and the speed up of the, of the viewport is not that good uh, for that. So, okay, so now that I'm here, I will mouse over this area, for instance, and we will set and select all the face onto this area that are flat and set the vertex normal. So I will press Control Shift N. It's computing. Ah, uh -uh, I have also the rest of the, oh, okay, I have disabled this option to isolate, isolate the, the mesh. So yeah, of course it removed the visibility and show back the visibility of the other meshes. So I will select it again. Okay, so now it, it should work. I will take a look. But now you can see the difference between this face and this one. You see that this artifact is gone now and it's completely flat. And even here, that's a bit more flatter than this one. Here you see some kind of a... But even here, yeah, it, the, the way of frame is good. I mean, there's the, this edge that is correctly set, the micro bevel one. I have to, ch to probably do a duplication on, on this area because I can uh, probably merge those. But anyway, I can remove those kind of uh, artifacts just by pressing the... Okay, so it's switching always. 
<coughs> to my uh, preset. Okay, so that's why it's it's selecting the the preset already. I have to add this to the to the tool. Um, we can change this. I will just add a matcap shader so this way it will be always override uh, override in the the viewport. So let's see matcap matcap shader. Okay, add this one. We'll go to the matcap. Okay, get this one. Okay, so now it's always visible this way. So I will do this so again, same thing over here onto this area. And so if we select one face and select the coplanar to degree, you can see that it selects those as well. So this is a touching coplanar selection. Uh, it's available with the select mode. So press Ctrl, Ctrl Q to get the sponsor uh, game content uh, pie menu and then select coplanar to degree and then you can select touching okay or on the wall mesh but sharing the same directions or even on multiple um, separated uh, elements so if i do this this way now it will select all the faces here but as well select all the faces that are not touching but sharing the same directions so those are pointing y up and so they are selected so the the way I'm I'm using the Venom is one one uh, solution is to press Control Shift N. It will set the vertex normal onto this area, just the touching one, and to get the to set the vertex normal on each uh, faces that are sharing the same directions. I'm pressing Control Alt Shift and N, and this way it will set here and here and even inside this one as well as well as on the top over here so if i do a control z you see that things have been set back and if i press it again you see it's completely flat now and this way that's probably the best one you can probably um will also change maybe the specular over here okay so that I will change maybe this roughness to just 10, 2. I want to get the specular visible. Well, it's not that much visible. I will higher the amount of the specular. Probably 20. Specular color. Can I change this and see it? Mm, not that much. Yeah, it's still visible, but not that much. Uh, probably lower this down. Okay, so we will do this way. Okay, so now you can see the specular highlight. And you see that even if it can be, uh, for instance, um, kind of a... Well, I will try to make a circle that is much more bright. Okay, so now we can see that the reflections and, I mean, the specular is getting a shape that is round right but the shape is not changing as you move and and check the the the, the surface so you can you can really see that now the vertex uh, normals are set correctly because all those shapes are really flat and it's not changing the there's no artifact at all um if i go back and again delete the vertex normal and see the result without you will see that here yeah we have some issue over here as well as this you see it's completely breaking it uh, so the venom uh, kit is really nice for this even with the largest uh, we have a better result uh, we have even more good result if we edit those manually so the the speed up of the selection with the Control alt uh, shift n and setting those is pretty fast you see it, it it really helps making this clear and and clean so here it looks like it's it's correct i have to check maybe over here control shift n 
Okay, we'll go on the bottom side, and on the bottom side it's completely messy. Again, we'll do this here, and it's completely flat now. And you can even, so this is just a, a solution where you are mousing over, and the, the polygon that is underneath the mouse is tooked and processed. And that's from this point that I'm defining the selections. But you can also, of course, if you prefer, define the selection by a manual selections. So here, for instance, we are selecting those. I will probably go back and show the wireframe. And we can set the vertex normal for those areas. So we are selecting those. And now the, the vertex normal are set for this selection. So, for instance, I will probably do this as well over here. I can do this way, but I, I can also probably use the selection by coplanar. So, if you want to get something that is round here, it's probably better to select from here to here and in between. This way, you use Control Shift N, and it it will flatten and I mean soften the, the 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 shade you see that now it's much better there is still some little uh, jagginess over here but it's way better than before here <laughs> we clearly see here see it here yeah so it's a matter of selection and and, and setting the, the vertex normal but it can be really fast I will probably do this with just a control shift N here. It's much even faster for this area because I know as I've modeled this that this one is completely flat, so it's okay. Probably that's better to have the wireframe still. Didn't, don't see the wireframe. Why? Why it's gone? Mm -hmm. I've seen it just few seconds before but it was gone so for instance here that's probably better to do this this way Control shift n and so now it it was gone uh the artifact here we have still some effects okay so here for instance those should be flat even to this way and this way so instead of selecting just again I will just uh, probably switch back to the matcap. Will be much more readable on the screen. And for Shift N, you see that it's clear clearly f fixing this issue. Boom! <laughs> I should say boom every time I'm using it. It's pretty good uh, and pretty handy. So yeah, those kind of uh, artifacts can be corrected a lot this way. Even here, you see that those are not sharing correctly the the shade. I can correct this a bit. So, if I want to use your kit, uh, how do I set up uh, the hotkeys? Ha, ah, the hotkeys. Okay. Um, so, for instance, here I fix this. The way you f you set the oh, when you are installing the kit, there is no key maps set at all. So it's completely free for you to set those. Um, what I'm doing is that here we have the sponsor menu and you go to the quick key maps. And on the quick key maps, there is already some presets uh, of key maps that I'm usually using. So for instance, for Venom, when I'm clicking here, you can check if you want this one, this one, and this one by default set to this, um, to this uh, command. So this is one way uh, where you can define the key maps on those. So as I'm using uh, Venom normally by default with the default key maps, everything is checked. But if you want to use some of those and some others uh, with another key maps, you can. You are completely free. Um, so when you press this, it, it's setting up the, the, the key maps. If you want to define your own, uh, you have a different way. So here we have the uh, the key maps, quick key maps, okay, with this menu. And we can even set for every 
kit all the key maps by default. This is what I'm using. So I have this command over here to set this. But you can also go to the master key map commander. And here that's command by command. Uh, command by command, you can define your own key maps. So for instance, here, if I go to the Venom, I have this menu and I can press, uh, um, just click here and I can set my own key map. Okay, so it's calling this um, popover or the command or the, the pie menu. So you can define your own uh, this way. You just click here and define your own key maps and you, you click OK and it's set. Is that explaining uh, uh, and replying to your question? Are you there? Yeah, it was good. Okay. So you, you, you understood that uh, every key map is not set from scratch. Uh, for, I mean, built in uh, inside the code. It's you that you, you, you have to set those or you can use the default one, as I said. So from the quick key maps over here, or you can set your own one by one, command by command, or just the commands you want uh, from the master key map commander. So you can offer, of course, clear uh, all the key maps that are related to the to the Venom, for instance. So if I do this, everything has been cleared, and I have to check it uh, again, for instance, as I'm using the default one over here, and click OK, and now everything is set back. So that's why also when I'm um, uh, installing the kit, the first time you open it, um, you open Moto and you have, you have you have didn't set anything. You have this quick key maps uh, popover that is shown at the start uh, of Moto, so it helps uh, you define the, the 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 key maps. So for instance, okay, let's get back to this. Um, I was uh, selecting some of the face over here to fix the issue on the on the shading. And you can see that here we didn't set it. It's completely messy over here. And here we've set it uh, correctly. And now the result is much better in terms of shading. It's much more softer over here without any jagged um, effect. You can use um, as well. I didn't show this also, but as I'm using a lot the uh, vertex normal system, I can also uh, use the the mirroring uh, for those. So, for instance, here, what I can what I can do, uh, I will get back to the mesh. Didn't see it. Okay, it's hidden. I'll probably move this on the way, and that will be better. I've changed the key map probably. Okay. I switched my keyboard to another language. That's why I'm looking for the key. Um, okay, so now we are there. I can, for instance, here we have this object that I have the center always uh, visible. This is part of the <clears throat> of the the preset that I'm that I'm using the IVP uh, game one here that is showing the center of the object and as well the axis. So, for instance. Here we know that the mirroring is on the Z axis. So I can, uh, for instance, delete some of the, 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 the vertex on the side. So we will delete uh, some of those by going to the modeling, delete. And I can delete pi axis. And this one is a, a new uh, kind of command uh, in the latest release. So I can delete uh, the, the vertexes. Uh, and of course, as well, the polygons uh, from the perspective of the center. So everything that is will, that will be on the Z negative can be deleted. OK, so this way it's easy to go back and open, for instance, the mirror uh, tools. So I'm using this in a polygon mode. So I will just select everything mirror and I will mirror this locally. So from the perspective of the center of the 
object and I will do this on the Z. So now we have a mirrored. So usually when you, what you can do when you are doing the vertex normal editing uh, is that you do this uh, before merging up uh, the, the different pieces. It lets you define the vertex normal on one side and just copy paste on the others this way, just by duplicating things. Uh, you can even, of course, do the selections uh, on the multiple on multiple areas. So this way, I have this selection. I press Control Shift N, and now I've set this uh, vertex normal onto this area. Okay, I will try to do this faster, just to make this onto this area. It can fix a lot of issue as well on those kind of junction over here. Um, oh yeah, you cannot see the wireframe when I have the, it's the matcap issue. Something really weird. Ah, I have to change the selection mode. That's why. Uh, I have the... Um, okay, mm, let me see. I was removing the visibility of the wireframe. Where did I change this? Mm. I'm not changing this many times. So. Okay, that's here. Yeah, so on those kind of areas, can be a bit messy so what i usually do here is do this selection over here set the vertex normal and then do this this way and then again just this area over here okay if i have something that is not good uh, i can still do one little trick that is selecting some edges for instance like this I will do uh, an extend, an edge extend, then extrude this outside, cut those faces, and set them their own uh, vertex normals. So now this one is the opposite. Okay, so now we have this. And the good trick is that I can move this, for instance, over here. We've set the vertex normal onto, onto this area. So if I take a look from the top, probably it will be more visible. Show vertex normal. We didn't see anything. Ah, I have to select it, probably. Okay, so ah, uh, that's the cooling. From the top view, uh, yeah, it's it's not. It's hiding the, the, the vertex normal uh, vectors because there's the curling over here. Curl, okay. So now you can see how oh, it, it processed the, the, the vertex normal with the largest one. So you see that this vector is correct, is correct, but this one is already tilted. So it means that the shading will be a bit bended even if you are out inside this area. So in order to correct this, I will go here, select this face, set the vertex normal onto this face only and to this one. And now from the top, and if I see back the vertex normal, please, I have to check maybe some some bugs in the, in the code. Uh, okay, now the, we have this vector that is correct. We can change even the size of the vectors that's, that will be much more visible uh, from for you. You can see the vectors correctly in the on the YouTube uh, feedback. Okay, so as you can see here, those are correctly straight. This one also is straight. So now we have correct representations. And so I will uh, get back the visibility of the rest of the mesh. Okay. So now we have this area that we will cut onto a new mesh. So here I'm using also one of the 
tool that I've made for the CAD toolkit. I press Ctrl Shift C and I have this little um, pie menu and I can cut this selection of uh, polygons and still get an, uh, a mesh visible. Uh, so if I go to the mesh over here in the item list, you will see that I will create a new mesh with the selections and it's uh, a child of it. So what is good with this is that you have the same rotations as the as the as the parent. So the the vertex normal are matching. Uh, if you change, for instance, the rotations uh, of the mesh, it can mess up the transfer. So anyway, we have this and this. I will uh, get back the visibility of the twice. So now we have. So for instance, I will select those faces and I will convert this to a section of vertex, okay? And now with the, the mouse over the area onto the, the child wand, the child uh, mesh that we have here, where we've set the vertex normal, I will press Alt-N and with the Alt-N, it can, so I will just remove this, it can uh, set the vertex normal onto those faces. So we will hide this and see this from the top. And you see that the, the data we, we've got uh, onto the, the, the child mesh have been transferred to these selections. So now it's correcting com completely the, the, the shade of, the, of this area. So. Let me see from the perspective without the view of the vertex normal, the, the vertex normal and even the wireframe and the grid plane. Now we have something that is completely flat. I mean, correctly shade and soft from one side to another. Did you understood the, the system? You have some delay, so I'm just waiting for you. Yeah, I understood it. Okay, so th this is just the transfer uh, kind of uh, tool you have over here. It's uh, under the game tools. If you don't uh, use the, the kit, you have some uh, commands like the transfer normal that is let letting you uh, selecting two different uh, objects and transfer the vertex normal from one to another this way. So this is what I'm uh, using over here, but I'm just skipping some uh, some issue with the selections and all that stuff. So it's much more faster to process this way. So same thing over here, we can set this this way, this way. I keep the selection because that's probably better in the um, on the stream to see correctly what I'm doing instead of uh, don't have any kind of selections. So here, for instance, this is not completely flat. Uh, and part of it is flat. I will get a look. Yeah, we have some kind of curve, curviness over here. So usually I triangulate the mesh at the end, uh, after I'm, I made the vertex normal editing, but you can totally do this uh, this way if you will. It's less difficult for the selections. I mean, Moro is okay for doing some kind of selection with the end guns and do the even the chamfer and all that stuff. So if you merge things like this and just triple it be af uh, before you export, it's completely okay. That's probably better to work this way than with the triangles, but this is the final mesh. Um, so over here, let's say we we did the, the vertex normal editing uh, correctly for all the mesh. So I will probably do this still this here. Oops, it's reposi repositioning the the view. I have to check this. This is one bug probably in the in the in the command. Okay, so now it's not set over here. We'll do this with the coplanar. 
okay it's fixed here with the selection that's probably better so when i'm just moving the 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 pointer i'm just launching the, the command you didn't see it because it's really subtle but it changed the shape uh, correctly so now i selected every polygons i will use the mirror and now i will use the the right one the right one is the local and merge so it it will um, mirror the, the the object here on the z-axis but also uh, select the boundary and connect those uh, co connected uh, areas so there are some missing uh, faces over here because we've deleted the the opposite uh, uh, faces and they were not some middle edge uh, over here so i have to do this again but of course it was set uh, from the start okay so we'll probably do this on the opposite side so in this kind of um, of uh, object where you have a, a symmetry between one side to another it's probably better uh, to uh, to do um, i mean to remove the the middle uh, edge connections you often have some model like this where you have the middle edge that is still there but there's no really necessity to have it so it can it can add some poly count <laughs> i'm not counting a lot the the poly count but it can help uh, producing a, a lot more um, a lot better uh, representation of the of the shape and with less polygons so this is why i prefer to do this i mean on all my uh, measures it's this way set it this way So I will probably not go too far on th onto this one and uh, refresh back the, the scene and we will take a look at the finished uh, part of it. So just revert the scene. Uh, I probably have to check again the map cap. Uh, yeah, I didn't save it, saved it. Okay, map cap. Okay, it was working correctly with this one. I'll probably move those as well. So I have different parts that are uh, already visible on the art, art station onto this, uh, this, those different pieces of the model. But it, it helps uh, a lot uh, bringing some great uh, shading over here. So yes, with and without, there's no, I mean, you cannot see the, uh, you can see <laughs> clearly the, the difference with and without, uh, but yeah, this is something I'm, I'm reading, taking, air, taking care of when I'm doing the, the shading. Uh, this one, uh, I probably saved after yeah there is no vertex vertex normal maps onto this one because we've erased it but as you can see on the on the mesh there is no in between edge that walks through all the axes you can still slice it uh, on the on the z axis i will do this over here slice z local i have to select the the mesh select the polygons Okay, and now we can see that we have a, a middle axis, but this one is not used. I mean, the face here and here are the same, so why not just deleting this this continuous uh, edge? With the vertex normal set, uh, it's it's working correctly. So anyway, um, what else I can show off? Probably this one. 
uh, yeah, the HDMI connector over here. So after you have uh, uh, done the normals uh, for a model, yeah, and you are using the middle split line, can you delete that line and the normals will still be good? Um, Symmetrical model. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. You can totally do, do this. Uh, once, I mean, the vertex normal is set on the on a on a vertex, and even you can. Uh, so, for instance, I will um, do a cut over here. So, just creating a line here. So here we have this vertex that have maybe some kind of a some kind of a, a data in the vertex. So I will just um, select the face here. I will just mess up things, okay? Just for, for the purpose, but you will see the effect of it. Okay, so we, now here onto this one, we have a completely messy uh, uh, vertex with a specific directions on the vector of the vertex normal. And this one over here, you see is correctly set. So if I move this one and select this one and merge them, uh, control shift, uh, no, not this one, sorry. Uh, I've already again changed my keyboard. No, it's not. Okay, let's see. We'll do this again. One here, one here. Okay, so now I've merged the, the twice uh, point and now you can see they are mix they are mixing the twice vectors because this face um okay so this is probably something i have to show on another scene um to explain okay so let's see we do just a cube and from this cube we'll just select all the edges and set them uh, to hard edge okay and then we will set the vertex normal onto this one set vertex normal so now if i show the vertex normal again with this i don't why well, i don't i don't see it hmm ah I see it, but it's too big. <laughs> I have a one meter uh, size. Okay, so if I check, uh, where is that? The auto size. Okay, with the auto size, you see that on each face, this this is the common use uh, and the common behavior of the vertex normal. From this face to this face, there is there's two set of vectors for the same point. So when you are merging things, uh, it will merge the two vectors, but didn't delete those. So this is why on the other uh, scene, it wasn't uh, uh, removing the, the, or taking one on, uh, as a priority on over uh, the other one. So you are mixing uh, two different vectors and even three when you have three different phase at the same point. Um, but if you have set the data and remove the, the, the point, it will not mess up things. For instance, um, I will do this over here. I will probably do a selection, uh, invert. I will delete the vertex normal. Now we don't use it and I will just bevel this or chamfer it five centimeters. Okay. So now we will just set everything onto this cube with a material at the maximum for the angle. Okay, we are at the maximum angle area largest. And then control Q, modeling vertex normal tools, and set everything soft. Okay, so set the vertex normal. Oops, didn't select the good one. Okay, 
So now you can see that as we've made everything soft, Modo understand that all those faces are sharing the same softness. And so there's only one vector, right? If you uh, move this, the vertex normal is maintained. Okay, so you can still have some kind of a, a shape like this, where you you have this shading that is pretty weird. It, it seems that this is completely flat, but it's not in terms of geometry. But as the vertex normal is set, it maintains this, uh, this uh, flatness on the shading. So if I select everything here and delete, of course it didn't change because those are set on the both areas and on the both side of the edge. Um, so this is, yeah, this is what you have on the other scene over here. So here as well, I've probably removed the vertex normal. Mm. Let me see, remove the show vertex normal. Let me revert the scene. Uh, probably just open the right one. Let me see. Uh, that's the HDMI. Okay. Okay. Okay, so for instance, over here, we have this, for instance, that is not really interesting. Uh, we have those edges that can be probably removed. This is one example where you can see that those might not be that much useful. So we keep the edge on the side, but those at the, at the center can be removed and it's not changing the shade, right? If you do things correctly, it will preserve uh, all the data. So for instance here, and this is one, one good example, as well. Those are separated pieces and they are not even connected to anything, right? They are just like this. So what oh, I uh, said those is that I selected, selected those edges and use um, the same thing with the Alt N uh, hotkey to to transfer the data from the, the bottom uh, areas over here. So I will just move them back here in place. I will delete the vertex normal for those just to... So I will select the vertex normal here with a selection of polygons and do a clear one. And now you will see that if I'm removing... Oh, it's still visible. Okay, let me see. I will just remove for everything. That will be better. Delete. Okay. So now I have no vertex normal uh, set. And you see that those are really sharp in terms of shading. If I didn't put the mouse over. Okay, you see that there's some cut in between. Or I mean, it clearly see, it, it clearly looks like um, there is no connection between, or right, still, still there is no smoothing in between. So I will set the vertex normal for this face. I will set it for everything, even. So select everything, set vertex normal. We have a vertex normal now, but this one will be set, and maybe this one as well. So you see, there is some kind of a bending effect onto this one. This is why also setting the vertex normal is much flatter. And now you don't have some kind of a bended effect like you see on the side. So from this one to this one, there's a, there's a difference. And the way I made the connection is by selecting the edge over here and with the conversion to point and alt n over here i use the transfer uh, from this selection to this one i mean from the bottom face to the target 
And so you see that now it looks like we have connected those two pieces, but they are still uh, floating. Same thing over here. So for instance, I will just hide this and this. It's clearly more visible over here. So you see, we clearly see there is a misconnection between the twice. And of course, it's two separate pieces, right? But we can fake this by controlling the vertex normal. So here we do a selection of edges. And I will convert this to the, vert the vertex selections. And with the, the face underneath, I will press Alt N and it projects and transfers the data. And now you can see it, it seems like there is a connection, but there is not. Understood? Probably seen this with the delay, but this is why I, I really like the, the tool with the the venom it's pretty pretty good for the result of it you can even stay with the edges uh, sections to project things up yeah it uh, looks good so yeah th this kind of uh, object like here where you have the same kind of things here you have floating elements and they didn't look like they are connected. Just have to select all of those. Expand the selections. Select the boundary. And press Alt-N over this face. And now it's, yeah, smooth. Um, same thing over here. i done the same thing here. But uh, you have to set, of course, the bottom face first so this one should be set uh, there is some some artifact over here as well as here so control shift n it's set now i can select the edge and you see it's completely floating but it's working great this one is this one is not set this one is set over here I have to set the mat cap uh, probably automatically Yeah, you got some misconnections. So you have also, um, ah, there's one thing that I didn't show here. Um, you can have some uh, auto loop selections uh, as well with the Venom. So if I take a look here. Yeah, there's a mo an auto loop. So Control Alt Shift N uh, can do uh, the auto loop selections. So here we have triangles, so it didn't work onto this. Onto this one, I will select another mesh that match the requirement for the showcase. Uh, so probably not this scene. We'll go back to the live stream scene. Was the untitled and this one as well. Okay. Okay, so probably over here. Okay, so on this one, for instance, if you want to set the vertex normal for all the loop over here, you just select just two faces and press Control Alt Shift N, and it will create the the, the vertex normal with the selection of the loop this way.
This is pretty on the uh, as well with with those kind of shapes where you have some round uh, um, bezel on it. I mean, from the from the front side, you see that it's on the corner, and you can still preserve some some shading correctly. If I do the um, edit chamfer, I can even make it bigger or smaller to make it more sharp. And the result is pretty good. Yeah. Same thing on this one. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty effective to use the vertex normal editing on this one. Let's see, I will move this onto a new scene. Oh, there's there's some message. What is that? Okay. Okay, so on this one with the, the default settings, it's not computing correctly. Um, I check the soft materials and make it to largest. It will be better. So material ref and not area largest. Hmm, still not that good. So we'll set the vertex normal for this one. And over here, I will press Control Shift N, and this artifact will be just gone. Yeah. Now it's in isolate mode, so the buttons are not visible, just like this. But here, for instance, if I want this to be completely uh, round without any issue with the shading, I would just select two, two polygons and press Ctrl R Shift N. I can do this as well over here. It straightens a bit the, the shading over here. So for instance here, that's pretty useful, where you have all this round area. If you have updated your model, is there any way to uh, quickly set the normals for the new updated parts? Um, what you should uh, probably do is um, setting the, the material settings, then set the vertex normal on all the mesh, then you can start the editing. If you change uh, settings in the material and you have set the, ver the vertex normal, it will didn't change the vertex normal. So the the way things are uh, set in model is that the material have the priori priority, then the hard edge and soft edge uh, system that is defined with this uh, game tools, uh, vertex normal tools, okay? Then you have the vertex normal, but the vertex normal are always at the top of the priority. So if the vertex normal are set, that's the vertex normal that you are uh, you you have to uh, change and update. Otherwise, it, it will not uh, um, uh, correct the the your issue. Understood. So over here, for instance, uh, if I if I want to remove some kind of a, a, uh, some artifact on the on the side over here, like here, for instance, instead of selecting this on the selections, I probably have to select some edge. And same thing as what we've done a few moments ago. Uh, just extend this edge, move it here, extend the selection, convert to polygon, Control X, Control V, 
to separate it and then here I will set the vertex normal with the polygon mode sorry and again cut this to a new mesh now we have this we can select all the polygons over here and even those So I will do this just here to show you, and here it will be not processed. And same thing as before, Alt, uh, so convert to vertex and Alt N over here. And now if I just delete this and check the wireframe without the wireframe, this face is, is correctly shade, okay? And this one is not. You see there is some kind of a triangle over here. So sometimes, yes, it's a matter of uh, having some high-res uh, high um, temp mesh for, for the, the transfer. Uh, you have it, for instance, on the dissipator I've made recently. Uh, I will open the this scene. This is one typical example where you have to use some kind of a way. Okay, so here we, I have a temp uh, mesh that is just an extrusion of the the faces that are li like here, so without the holes. Uh, this is something that I've already made. So if I extend and select the boundary, you have this boundary that is uh, selected. And so I've extended this uh, boundary up and then uh, scale it a, a bit down on the X axis. And so the shape after is like this one, not from the front view. You see that there is a, a little taper on it. And so I made this one just to divide it uh, a bit and uh, in order to fix the, the to fix the vertex normals onto this area over here that is that should be soft uh, i used the transfer as well so if i just delete this and set it again i will set this back show only this so the shading the, doesn't look like it's not bad, but it's it it is. With the largest uh, system, it's yeah. So here you can see there are some uh, artifact at the center of the of the mesh. So it's not correctly set on the on the side as well. So what I was doing is I'm selecting this, selecting the face on the side. So maybe do this like that, expand the selections. Expand again. I have some selection, to right? Okay. So it can, can take some time for the, the selection, of course, but if you master this during the, the time you are modeling this, it's better. So over here, I will just select till this point. And now from this selection of points, oops, I will mouse over this area and use the Alt N key. And so the vertex normal from this mesh, it have some vertex normal, have been uh, projected to this one. I mean, transferred to this one. So it looks much softer than before. Again, yeah, same kind of uh, 
of things to do. So I think we've talked enough about the Vellum kit. Uh, it helps a lot uh, in my in my current raffle. Don't know for other uh, fellow model users, but yeah, it was a pleasure to use it. Pretty fast to fix those those issues. Same thing over here. Mouse over, press Control R Shift N, and boom, it's done. Even here, you see some kind of a bending. If I do this here, now it's softer. I would just do a Control Z to show you. Yeah, there is some kind of a soft effect on the shade. If I just isolate even the, the polygons and look at those, you see that the <clears throat> the vertex normal um, vectors are not pointing correctly. Where is the where is the show vertex normal on the properties? Oh, something weird here. Ah, vertex normal selected. Show vertex normal. Yeah, so you see they are crossing, they are uh, pointing outside, and so there is an issue here. So instead of doing this, I restrict everything. Press Control Alt Shift N, and of course I have to get back this. Now the vectors are aligned. And they are pointing to the center, but they are facing correctly. Yeah, that's something you can also even see on the Blender side uh, with the mesh machine uh, tools. Okay, I think we we've, we are done yet uh, with this. Probably talk about this later on uh, on other kind of models. You have some questions maybe on the different uh, example over here? I think we're okay. Uh, I will stop here. I also used a lot Venom onto the, onto the boat recently. Um, so to make those kind of connections between the different parts there's a lot of uh, use uh, case like this yeah i think you have been uh, pretty clear uh, with the different problems on uh, many different models yeah i hope so <laughs> if there's no uh, there's not uh, correct uh, um, talk of, about this uh, please leave a comment on the on the youtube channel and I will talk about this uh, later on the next uh, live stream, or even explore uh, other parts of the of the kit. There is a lot of, uh, to cover, uh, from the UVs to latex normals to batch uh, stuff and CAD uh, imports. So it was a pleasure uh, to have you, uh, Gustav. Have a good weekend, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye, Gustav. The delay is horrible. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.